Oblivion is more than 15 years old at this point, but you wouldn't know it by the size of its community. People are still creating mods, recording videos, posting memes, and asking for help daily. At this point, there's a mod for adding just about anything to the game. From cross-franchise characters, to new areas and quests, and yes, even knockoff anime waifus. But another group of people aren't just thinking about what can be added, but what can be taken away. That brings us to the classic concept of a challenge run, often taking core elements of the game and limiting them in some way. I did one a while back to see if I could beat the game without dealing any damage. That was a huge challenge, but still pretty fun to play through. I won't spoil the outcome of that run, but I'll leave a link to it for later. Recently, another interesting idea popped into my head. Oblivion is an RPG, so most of the gameplay revolves around combat and looting. But what if I threw out that whole loot aspect? What if I didn't pick anything up? No looting treasure chests, boxes, barrels, you name it. No looting defeated enemies or NPCs. No grabbing items off the ground or out in the world. Oh, and no pickpocketing either, because that's basically just sneaky looting. The only items I can get have to be intentionally given to me by a quest or an NPC. The one caveat to this is that I'll still pick up key items that are required to complete quests. The only mod I'm going to be using is called Realistic Leveling, which basically just auto-distributes stat points as you level up. It's a decent quick fix for Oblivion's overwhelmingly broken leveling system, which I also did a huge video analyzing. But that's aside from the point. We're all here for a lootless run of an RPG that almost entirely revolves around loot. So let's just get into it. I could say that I intentionally picked a Dark Elf for the fire resistance or something, but it was actually just a random choice. I've played through the game as most races, and it really doesn't matter all that much in the end. Breton's still probably the most OP though. After that, I spent the first couple minutes awkwardly following the Emperor and his guards through some secret tunnels. The guards killed a few assassins, leaving behind some tempting loot, but I had to ignore it. It felt very wrong to not immediately loot everything in sight for the first 15 minutes or so. Eventually, the Emperor and his friends left me alone with some aggressive rodents of unusual size. I softly punched them to sleep and moved on into the newfound tunnel. Immediately I was faced with a locked door. The game forces you to either pick up a key or lockpick the door to continue on. Since I needed the key to progress, and it has no use otherwise, it was completely within the rules of this run. I opened up the door and punched my way through some more minor threats, eventually reuniting with the Emperor. When he asked for my birth sign, I picked the mage for a nice little boost to Max Magicka. After a quick interlude, the Emperor died a very preventable death and it was time to pick my class. I expected to be doing quite a lot of punching early in this run, with a hefty amount of spell casting later on. To support this, I picked Strength and Endurance as favorite attributes. For major skills, I chose Blade, Block, Destruction, Hand-to-Hand, -hand, Heavy Armor, Restoration, and Sneak. Since I had realistic leveling installed, major skills weren't as important as they are in the base game. Of the bunch, Destruction and Restoration both level incredibly slowly, especially compared to other schools of magic. Getting some bonuses to these two would save a lot of time grinding them up later on. After saying bye to Boris, I was attacked by a large mob of DLC quest pop-ups I had to dismiss. After that, the only things between me and the open world were a couple of rats and goblins, nothing a few fireballs couldn't handle. Upon leaving the sewers, I made a quick pit stop to roast some bandits before fast traveling to Wayne and Priory. I told Joffrey about what happened, and he told me to scurry off to find Martin Septim. He also mentioned something about taking whatever I needed from his chest, but that whole no looting rule put a stop to that. Before heading to Kvach to be vaporized by some Daedra, I decided to split off to start both the Fighter's Guild and the Mage's Guild. I also did a few odd jobs here and there, like teaching some guys not to go into shops late at night. I even got 100 gold for that one. Most of the early guild quests were pretty easy. Go somewhere, kill something, and bring back a quest item. You know, the usual. Although, the mage's guild quest in Skingrad was pretty tricky with my lack of equipment and skills. I had to rescue Urthor from a cave full of zombies, but he didn't seem that interested in fighting them half the time. So I ran circles around the ancient AI, getting in hits and backing off before they could hit back. In between checking off guild quests, I decided to head over to the arena for some quick cash. I squeezed through a few fights with my fists and two spells, but quickly hit a wall as the difficulty ramped up. At the least, I had some gold and a brand new heavy arena raiment, handed directly to me at no cost. Next I took a fighter's guild quest where I was given a couple weapons to deliver to a cave. Since these were handed directly to me, I finally had a sword I could use, for a little bit. 
I wanted to keep progressing through the fighters guild, so unfortunately I had to hand over the weapons to the people in the cave. I got some gold for finishing that one, so it wasn't a total loss. With a bit of money on hand, I stopped by a couple different towns to pick up beginner spells for all schools of magic. Stuff I could spam cast to level up while running around on other quests. You know the deal. Little tip for those who don't know, you can hold block while casting spells and you'll cast much faster. Saves a ton of time when you're leveling up your magic. I eventually decided to buy a two-handed claymore, completely forgetting that slow weapons are pretty bad in Oblivion because I never use them. Lesson learned. Besides, who needs weapons when you're a fully-fledged member of the Arcane University? I can now make any spell I wanted, if only I had the money or skills required. So I spent a while on some more random odd jobs and guild quests to get some levels and gold to buy more spells. Now that I felt slightly more prepared, I made my way to Kavach to close that Oblivion gate. Normally I'd run past everything, but I knew I needed to fight things to level up a bit for later. It was pretty tricky with my limited gear, but I slowly punched and magicked my way up the tower. At the top, I touched the glowy orb and the whole place fell apart. Inside Kvatch, I found Martin, or Brother Martin as he wanted to be called, and we agreed to go check out the castle. Me and the boys cleaned up the streets, knocked some heads in the castle, and that was that. I took Martin back to Wayne and Priory and some assassins tried to jump us. Unfortunately for them, Joffrey is secretly a samurai or something. Next we all fast traveled up to Cloud Ruler Temple, and they invited me to join their katana gang. I even got a free sword for signing up. They sent me off to meet up with my old friend Boris to do a little urban exploration. We sliced and diced our way through some sewers until coming upon the secret meeting point for the Mythic Dawn. I told Boris I'd handle the meeting professionally and discreetly, and uh, I definitely handled it. We cleaned up the rest of the bad guys, and I took their book to finish off the quest. Surprise, surprise, the books had a hidden message to go look at some tomb in the graveyard at a specific time. I forgot exactly what time that was and I was too lazy to check, so I just waited an hour at a time while leveling up my magic. Eventually the symbol started glowing and told me where to find the mythic dawn for the next portion of the quest. I rocked up to their hideout, guns blazing. The subtle approach takes too long, plus I'd have to loot my items back at the end, which would have broken the rules. So instead, I just started sending fists and spells flying left and right. I was definitely too undergeared and underleveled to take on this many enemies at once, so I died a couple times here. But with enough effort and some sneaky moves, I eventually pulled it off. I grabbed the big magic book and freed the prisoner while Mankar Kamoran peed his pants and teleported away. Finished off a few more cultists on my way out and delivered the goods back to Cloud Ruler Temple. I was handed some busy work finding spies in Bruma, which was a pretty easy task given that they wanted to kill me. Next up, Martin asked me to pop down to the store to grab him a Daedric artifact. I tried to tell him it's not that easy, but he wasn't really listening. So I went over to Azura's shrine, where a statue told me to kill some vampires in a cave. This seemed completely logical, so I decided to do just that. The vampires were decked out in some fancy gear, too tough for me to face head on. Luckily, an oblivion gate was open just down the road. I lured the vampires over to the monsters at the gate, and they all started attacking each other. I finished off the remaining stragglers, and went back to the statue to receive my gift. Only, it would be my gift if Martin didn't need it. I suppose I could have found some other artifacts to give to him, but that would have taken effort. In between all these big important story quests, I made some more progress in the arena, and saved a boat hotel thing from some incompetent pirates. I also joined the Thieves Guild passing their test by grabbing the quest item right in front of the other trainee. She seemed a little disappointed, immediately standing up and walking off into the night. But then I remembered that you can't progress in the Thieves Guild until you've stolen and fenced some amount of items. Even though it's sort of a quest, I couldn't really justify that being in the rules of the run, so I gave up on the Thieves Guild. Instead, I decided to make some gold by helping out Glarthir in Skingrad. He thought everybody was spying on him, but it didn't really seem to be the case. However, if you accuse one of them, he gives you a whole bunch of gold to go kill them. I was actually thinking of joining the Dark Brotherhood anyways, so why not kill two birds with one fist? David Cirilli took the fall, and I had to pay a 40 gold fine for attacking a civilian with no witnesses. Nobody saw him die either, so I didn't have to pay for that at least. I wasn't really vibing with Clarthier at this point, so I decided to take him out too. I did say two birds with one fist, right? The Dark Brotherhood seemed pretty happy with this, so they gave me a fancy dagger for my troubles. With my new gear and slightly higher levels, I decided to craft up a couple new spells. Like one to give me nearly a full set of bound equipment. This made up for my complete lack of decent gear in some way, but not entirely. 
My next task was closing the Oblivion Gate outside Bruma with Captain Bird at my side. This quest is always a slow one because the bird needs to make it to the top of the tower so you can show him how to touch an orb I guess. He's weak, monsters are abundant, and the guards that are supposed to help you die almost instantly. But we carved our way up the tower and eventually managed to close the gate. He assured me that him and his men could close any future gates without my help. After that performance, I highly doubted it. Before moving on, I went and became Grand Champion at the arena, largely thanks to my summon Daedroth. This not only upgraded my arena raiment, but also unlocked weekly matches with huge gold rewards. If I wanted to wait around, I could farm up as much gold as I wanted to buy just about anything. I made a bit of money this way, and mostly just spent it on high level spells. As a side effect of becoming the Grand Champion, I now had everyone's least favorite follower, the adoring fan. Instead of sending him off like most people do, I decided to let him follow me around to see how far he'd actually make it. The next main quest was to grab the fancy old Septim armor for Martin. Since he's the heir and all, shouldn't he be the one to get it? I guess he didn't feel like it, so I set off to do his job for him. There were lots of angry ghosts and skeletons on the way, and their health bars were getting mighty big at this point. Luckily I had some decent summons to help speed up the process of their not living. Once all the ghosts were in place, I grabbed the armor and took it back to Martin. Never satisfied, he sent me off on another quest to get him a big glowing rock. If you didn't know, the Great Welkin Stone is at the end of a very long dungeon filled to the brim with annoying zombies and goblins. Luckily, I had invisibility spells at this point, so I just ran by all of them. I took the stone and a lich popped out of nowhere to try and stop me. I could have stayed for an epic 10 minute fight with him and his buddies, but I also could have just went invisible and ran out. I decided to go with option B. Next up was the big battle for Bruma. A whole army of like 10 guys showed up to try and save the city. Martin, Boris, the adoring fan, and the rest of the gang were there too. I watched them duke it out with the Daedra for a while until the great gate opened up. Inside I took the classic strategy of turn invisible and run past everything worked like a charm. For some reason, the adoring fan's body flew out of the gate with me as it closed. I have no idea where he went when the battle started, but he must have followed me into the great gate and gotten killed at some point. I gave him a moment of silence and then headed off to do some shopping before embarking on the final quest. Upon returning to Cloud Ruler Temple, the adoring fan was just standing there and staring at me like nothing had happened. I ignored the strange undead boy and took Martin's portal to Mankar's paradise. Pretty soon after arriving, some angry guy had a quest for me, but I figured punching him would just be easier for all of us. I made my way onwards into the caves while Mankar monologued me over the loudspeakers. Inside I met Eldamil, a cultist who didn't like Mankar, so we teamed up to bring him down. He had the benefit of respawning shortly after he was killed at any point, but on the other hand he also did almost no damage. A living punching bag was better than nothing though. Eventually we reached Mankar's cathedral, where he was ready to deliver a whole speech upon my arrival. I didn't care to hear it for the thousandth time, so I attacked him mid-sentence. I was definitely not prepared enough for this fight, as evidenced by a handful of quick deaths. I could get him low countless times over, but he would always heal up to full very quickly. Eventually it was my Daedroth that did him in. I jumped away for a short time to recover, and it smacked the sense out of him before you could heal. The place collapsed and I was promptly teleported out. Martin congratulated me, while the now living adoring fan creeped on our conversation just a few feet away. Me, Martin, Boris, and the fan all headed over to the Imperial City for the grand finale. Despite the quest telling me to protect Martin, I just ran off to the temple on my own. Once Martin arrived, we had a quick chat and he turned into a giant fire dragon, fought a demon, and then turned to stone. It was probably an epic conclusion 15 years ago when I first played this, but the final battle is just laughably bad now. And with that, I had finally completed Oblivion without looting. I didn't touch a single item on the ground, in a container, or on a body, unless it was required for a quest. I ended up severely undergeared and unprepared for most situations, but still made it work in the end. Relying on quests for items and small bits of gold here and there was pretty limiting, but still a fun challenge. In fact, the reward for most quests is just intended to be the loot you collect on the way, in a chest or off a boss. Quests that actually give good rewards when you turn them in were few and far between. But I still had a good time figuring out this run, and it wasn't painfully slow like the no damage run I did before. I'd recommend this challenge to returning players, it definitely makes you approach the game in a completely different way. Anyways, this video turned out to be a lot bigger than I planned, so I think this is a good spot to wrap it up. If you have any ideas for other runs or games you think I should cover, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll leave some links to my past Oblivion videos for anyone interested. 
And if you want to support the channel and more stuff like this, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Thanks for sticking around, folks. See you all in the next one.